Thanks very much for joining us for this week's Yorkshire Legends interview. We're joined by footballing royalty, Leeds icon Eddie Gray. Hopefully I've got all my facts right, if not you can... Don't worry, I'll tell you. At any point. Um, so you were born 17th of January 1948. 1948, aye, in Rosebury Street in Glasgow. Uh, that's where my mother grew up as well, you know, my mum and dad, that's their love. My dad was for the Gorbals. My yeah. dad was for Matheson Street in the middle of the Gorbals. Uh, my mum rescued him, I think, you know, <laughs> got him out of the gorbals, you know. Uh, so that's, that's where I was brought up, around the corner of the Shawfield, and yeah. a, a, you know, a very famous junior park as well, Rosebury Park, you know. I, I think um, when I look back in the days, you know, they were great days to grow up, you know, but when I was young, mm. you know, when I was about seven, we moved to Castlemilk which at that time, and probably still will be, the biggest house in the state in Europe. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, they were the good days, you know. And, and growing up, were you always playing football? Did you always sort of want to be a footballer as a, as a young boy? Well, the funny thing is, you know, people, things have changed nowadays, you know, kids, you know, for, you know I've got, you know, I had kids that, you know, played football, you know, Frank, my brother, he's, he, his son played Andrew and he's got kids that go to academies. In those days it wasn't like that. So I never thought about becoming a player. You know, it's something that, you know, I, play, I played all the time, I played in the streets and I played for my school team for I was six. Um, but that was always way up there, way up high. You know, I was like thinking, I just played football because I love playing football. That was basically it. Uh, my dad used to take me everywhere, you know, we were Celtic daft, you know, we used to go and watch the Celtic and in, in the 50s, you know, growing up, you know, like, the big clubs in England then were, you know, obviously Wolverhampton Wanderers, you know, Man United with the Busby Babes, you know, um, so, so, you know, I've, I've got to be perfectly honest with you, you know, you, you graduate through you know, school football and fair was a young age, you know, like, you know, you get to that age, 10, 11, and you're playing with the Glasgow school boys. Um, and then, you know, you progress to the Scottish school boys, and when you're about 13, 14, then scouts for clubs, different clubs, come knocking on the door. And that's when you begin to realise, oh, yeah, I've got a chance to be a footballer, you know, as such. I mean, I always loved the game, it was the only thing I ever did, really, you know. but. As, as far as, as, you know, now, you know, you get young boys and they watch the television and there's all these academies. So they grow up for the ages of six and seven and eight, you know, and thinking they're going to be players. And it could be a big disappointment to a lot of them, because yeah. you, you know what like the fallout is. Yeah. And, I mean, you said that you followed Celtic as a young boy. Was there any role models you had back then, any players you, you admired? Oh, I, you know, I, I liked all the Celtic players. It was an old Celtic player that I used to love called Willie Ferner. Mm. You know, Willie was, to me, he was a great player. Uh, he used to always say he was greedy with the ball because he'd never pass it to him, eh? You know, I mean, sometimes that got labelled at me when I was at school. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I used to love Willie Fern, eh? Uh, but, I mean, all the Celtic players of that generation, I mean, and I ended up playing with one of them at Leeds United and Bobby Collins, you know. Yeah. I mean, I used to watch Bobby in the, you know, in the, the 50s, and, you know, when I came here, early 60s, and Bobby was still, you know, he was at the football club. And basically, you know, he, he, when you look at the history of the football club, you know, the whole history of the football club, I think he's been the most important transfer, you know, at the football club ever. And Gordon Strachan was a great you know, signing for Howard Wilkinson and his team. Yeah. But I think Bobby was the man that started what you could call you know, like the Don Revy revolution, you know. He was the man that came in and he was a winner. And <laughs> Sometimes he carried it a little bit overboard, <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> he was a very small in stature sort of guy, wasn't he? But Five feet three, size four and a bit. <laughs> but, would kill you. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hard man, Bobby. Oh, hard man. Mm. Great player. Great player. I mean, people forget, when, you know, when Bobby came here, you know, like, in the early 60s, he'd been a great Celtic player, yeah. a great Everton player. Yeah. Came to Leeds, 
And Bobby was won football of the year when he was at Leeds when he was in his mid thirties. Mm. And that shows you how good he was, you know. He was a great, great player. But big influence on everybody um, that come through the ranks at that time. Yeah. You know. If you asked any of the players that played, they would say, you know, we all played with great players, but he was the man that started it all. I mean, I remember saying to Johnny Giles once, because Johnny played at Man United and just won the FA Cup. And I says, Johnny, you were at Man United, won the FA Cup, what did you come to Leeds for? He says, one of the reasons I came to Leeds is because I knew Bobby Collins was there. <laughs> but, and when you think, you know, Giles is probably splitting hairs, but he's probably the best player I've played with at this football club. Mm -hmm. uh, so that just goes to show you how good Bobby mm -hmm. Collins was. <laughs> so, uh, when when the move to Leeds came about, how, how did that, that all how happen? How did that happen? Yeah. Well, <laughs> as I say, scouts started to come and there was a lot of people knocking at the door and cast them out. But one day I was playing with the Glasgow schoolboys uh, against the Lancashire schoolboys at, at Barfield, mm. Celtic's yeah. old training ground. And the scout went up to my dad, name was John Barr. Uh, and at that time, this was 1961, 62, mm. uh, and John had started working for the club and he, he asked my dad if I'd get into Leeds. Um, and it was Christmas 1962 he wanted me to get in, you know. Um, and to be perfectly honest, we, after the game, my dad says to me, this is a scout for Leeds United, and I'd never heard of him. Mm. I, I hadn't actually heard of him. Yeah. Because I hadn't done anything, you know, when you're growing up, and you know, people think, oh, that's strange, but I was growing up in Glasgow, I used to only look at, it. you know, you only used to see the top teams, you'd see yeah. Wolverhampton Wanderers playing in Europe, Man United in cup finals, you know, watching the Celtic, Rangers games, you know, like, I'd, I'd never heard them, but I decided I'd come down. And as soon as I come down, I, you know, like, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I come down thinking, well, I'm not going to sign, but I'll go down and have a look at the place. You know, I think I'd just come back for hybrid. Um, you know, I was down there for a few days and just before Christmas and I come down here at Christmas and I just so impressed with the manager. Um, I decided that it was a club uh, I wanted to join, even though I was only 15, you know, 14 at the time. I think what uh, John Barr, you know, John, you know, you look back on things and John must have phoned Don and says, listen, I'm sending a boy down, you know, like, and traditionally, you know, at that particular time, it's Christmas time, yeah. they have trials, yeah. so-called trials for boys, but when I come down, uh, they met me at the station, they took me to the ground, um, and the trials were going to start, and, and I'd I never forget, I'd say, Don says, no, no, you're, the, you're, you're training with me, so he took me training in the first team. <laughs> when I was, you know, 14. And Fulham Park across the road now with the car yeah. park, because that's where we trained. And it was a bad winter in 1962, yeah. and the ground was full of snow and ice, you know. But I went and trained with the first team, and I, went, I remember picking the ball up, i never forget it, in Fulham Park. A lanky big centre half came into me, I think his name was Charlton. <laughs> and I nutmegged him. And I was running around the other side of him, he oh. booted me up in the air. <laughs> I was lying in the snow, and he looked down at me and said, don't do that to me again, you little bee. <laughs> and that's, that was my first experience. Um, and then I decided, I, you know, I just loved the place. It's just how they treated me, you know. Mm. So, John, you know, fair play to John. John became full-time scout at Leeds, you know, for years. You know, he, you know, he brought so many players down, John. Um, so that was, that was how it started, and I joined the club. Uh, I actually come down in May 1963, that's when I joined the club. But, but the funny thing about about that is, you know, like I was playing with the Scottish school boys at the time and I'd signed for Leeds. Mm -hmm. Illegally. Well, you know, okay. be before I left school. Then Don had promised my mum and dad that he'd put the forms in the drawer mm -hmm. and they wouldn't register me after I left school. But there was a lot of clubs after me. I mean I'll never forget one day in the house in Castlemilk, Don had come up to see him. He used to come up quite regular just to make sure things were all right. And he was in the house and uh, 
at that time there was a lot of scouts coming up and knocking on my mum and dad's door and uh, the door went and Don was in the house so Don says I'll just get into the bedroom so we opened the door and who's standing at the door Tommy Doc he was manager at Chelsea at the time he'd come up to see my mum and dad so <laughs> mum and dad were a bit apprehensive knowing Don was in the bedroom and <laughs> so what happened is I was talk talking to Tommy about this you know, you know a couple of years ago and uh, he remembered it Tommy because he was talking away to my mum and dad and I think Tommy's a sharp character mm. and he knew, he says, um, I'm telling you what, he says that B Don Revy's in the bedroom isn't it? <laughs> he did, <laughs> you know, we're quick as a flash, mum and dad didn't know what to say. But anyway, <laughs> that's just a story. So what happened then, uh, before my last Scottish schoolboy game, and we were playing against Ireland at Love Street, mm. Uh, <clears throat> Don registered me and it was in the papers that I was going to you know Leeds United mm -hmm. and right away this was in about the Wednesday I think we were playing the Saturday right away Sean Fallon come up for Celtic because yeah. they still thought I had a chance of going to Celtic and try to persuade my mum and dad try to tell my mum and dad how he could get it we could get the contract. But anyway, my mother, who's mm. my mother's still living in the same house in Casimo, as we sit here um, on her own, and she phoned Don Revy and told him that if I didn't play on the Saturday, if they didn't let me play for the Scottish School Boys on Saturday, I wasn't going to Leeds. So Don come up the road <coughs> on the Friday, and he says to my mum and my dad, I'm telling you what, he'll definitely play tomorrow. I'm telling you, he'll play. So my mum says, well, if he doesn't, he's no coming to Leeds. He says he'll play. And he says to my mum, and I'll tell you something else, he's leaving school on Monday morning. And my mum says, no, he can't leave school on Monday morning. He says, he's leaving school on Monday morning, and I'm taking him down to Leeds. He says, have his bag packed, eight o'clock, Monday morning. So I go to the hotel to meet the Scottish school boys and the selectors there, and they call me into the room. He says, great, is it true you're signed for Leeds? I says, yeah. I says, yeah. He says, well, you know the consequences. I said, I went, yeah. So we left to go to the game. I guess to Love Street, and I used to play midfield. I was never a winger in my life. I played okay. midfield. Mm -hmm. I was always a midfield player. And I played number six, the Scottish schoolboys, you know. And I get into the dressing room, and number six is singing there. And nobody says anything to me. Because I just presumed I wouldn't be playing, you know. But nobody went and put the shirt on. So 15 minutes before the game, I just went and put the shirt on and I went and played. So Don told, says, phoned me once, says, I told you he'd play. So Monday morning, he comes up. I've got my bike packed. He asked me where my school was. I take him to a lady in St Margaret's in Kinnan Palace when I went to school. He asked me where the headmaster's office is, took me up, jabbed the door, told me to stand outside. Went in to see the headmaster. Five, mi five minutes later, the headmaster comes out, shakes my hand and says, all the best in your career, Gray. I was saying, no, I don't know if brown paper envelopes were invented then. <laughs> but he done something. That's true. And I come down there. Yeah. So I left school without any academic qualifications mm -hmm. whatsoever because I didn't sit, wasn't supposed to sit my exams to June, mm -hmm. you know, just before the break-up mm -hmm. in Scotland, the holiday. So now I come down here without sitting any exams around, wow. you know. And... That was it, that's how I came here.